Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Keisha Pollock and I'm the president of the Delta Omega Alpha chapter. Just a little bit about me. I graduated from the Bloomberg School of Public Health in 2006 when I was inducted into the Alpha chapter. After graduating from here, I went to the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and I'm honored that I was able to join the faculty in the Department of Health Policy and Management. Welcome to our first online annual meeting. I'm thrilled to have you all here today. The agenda for our time together today is as follows. We'll begin with some introductory remarks, hear about the chapter, and then I'll introduce our featured speaker, Dean Mike Clagg. Again, welcome. I'm thrilled to be here with you today. I look forward to connecting with all of you, to sharing what is happening here at the Alpha Chapter, and to allowing you to hear from Dean Clagg about what's going on at the school. You'll have an opportunity to ask questions, so please keep a list of questions for myself or for Dean Clagg. We ask that you keep your questions um, succinct, so that way we have a time to get to all of them. So just to make sure we're all on the same page, as a reminder of the Honor Society that you're part of, Delta Omega is the Public Health Honor Society. It was founded in 1924 at this school, and it recognizes outstanding achievement in public health. Today, there are over 80 chapters at schools of public health around the world and well over 15,000 members. The mission of Delta Omega is to encourage and recognize excellence in practice, research, education, and academic achievement in public health. Our Alpha chapter is comprised of membership from faculty, alumni, and students. We accept rec uh, nominations, excuse me, from alumni and faculty throughout the year. We can, um, we also induct students every year and we can, um, uh, you can look on the website, excuse me, for more information about how to do that. To date, our program has been centered around activities for current students, namely the poster competition and our scholarship competition. And I'll come back to those two programs in a moment. This slide lists the members of our current executive board. Again, I'm the current president. I'm president through next June. And you see the other members here. Megan Davis is our president-elect. and I look forward to turning it over to her next year. If you're interested in being part of our leadership, I'll provide you with a little bit more information about this towards the end of the presentation. In addition to our board, we also have chapter committees. Here's a list of our committees. We get together and select the faculty and alumni who are inducted annually. We do the same for our students. We also have a scientific poster competition uh, committee. We have a scholarship committee, and we have a member engagement committee. Again, we welcome your involvement on any of these committees. Just reach out to us and let us know that you're interested. You do not need to be in Baltimore to participate. Please follow up with us if you want to get more involved. I oftentimes hear from several of you that you're unaware of what the chapter's been doing. Thus, I'm gonna share with you some of our recent activities so that you can know what's going on. Last year, we inducted over 90, under, uh, over 90 students, 11 faculty and 13 alumni. At one point, we had an induction ceremony where we had a speaker, but actually we've changed. So now we allow each person who's inducted to have some time to talk about what they're doing in public health. We have a breakfast and actually it's the day before commencement so families can come and see their relatives being inducted into the chapter. We also were one of the first chapters to induct undergraduates as associate members. This past year, Marie Diener West, fellow board member and myself, we attended that induction ceremony where 11 undergraduate students were inducted into Delta Omega as associate members to recognize excellence in undergraduate training. The year before, there were about a dozen students. We're thrilled to have an associate members chapter at the undergraduate campus. Many people also ask, well, what happens to my money when I donate to Delta Omega? A lot of your dues goes towards our scholarships, and that's why paying dues is important. The scholarship endowment helps to defray part or all of research project or scholarly activity, and it's, again, supported entirely by your dues. Here's a list of our 2014 scholarship winners that were recognized for their achievements in practice, laboratory sciences, and measurement. 
We also started a new scholarship in recognition of Dr. Timothy Baker, who was a longtime board member and who passed away in December 2013. This award recognizes a newly inducted member of the chapter who's a proponent of the poor and the vulnerable and who works for the cause of social justice and international health. We're really excited about this award and our inaugural winner was Shreya Shrestha, who is uh, summarized, her achievements are summarized here on this slide. And she was awarded this particular award for her passion and accomplishments in advancing health in, in Nepal. Another one of our achievements has been in the area of the, our scientific poster competition. A few years ago, fellow board member Megan Davis helped to develop a poster craft seminar where students actually learn how to put together a poster and how to engage audiences. Since that time, we've had very successful poster sessions. Last year, we had over 50 submissions around laboratory sciences and applied science. This year, we had a new category for policy and practice, and we had over 80 abstracts submitted. The students stood with their poster earlier this week, and we had a judging, uh, judging of the posters, and we'll be awarding the winner of the 2015 um, poster session really soon. But what you see here on this slide is our 2014 winner, Kaylin Deal, who recently graduated from the Department of Molecular Microbiology and Immunology. Kaylin's poster was selected amongst all the poster winners from the categories, and she represented our chapter at the 2014 APHA meeting in New Orleans. We also began some strategic planning over the past year to really think about, well, what is our purpose in our niche area in the school, and what are some opportunities for growth? The strategic planning was very successful, and I'm looking forward to continuing to implement the ideas that came out of this, this planning process. One thing that developed from our strategic planning was that we have a new mission statement, which is up here on the slide. And our new mission statement is that the Alpha chapter of the Delta Omega Public Health Society connects our students, alumni, and faculty to develop and recognize leadership that advances and sustains the public's health. When I became president of the Alpha chapter, I outlined three goals and they addressed the following areas. The first is strengthening engagement. We want our members to feel engaged in our chapter. So helping individuals to think about ways to connect with us is something that I'm really focusing my energy and my attention on. Related to that are finding opportunities for individuals to use their time, talent, and treasure in a way to help advance the mission of the chapter. So providing opportunities for individuals to get involved in service or to help us advance our committees being able to use your talent and skills to also help advance the mission of the chapter, and also finding ways to meaningfully give your treasures to help advance our mission. And finally, our governance, our structure was really important for me. We have spent some time updating our bylaws and looking at our committee structures, and we're gonna to continue to focus on that throughout this year. I'd like to draw your attention to some upcoming ways for you to connect with the Alpha chapter. First is service. In 2015, we're partnering with SOURCE, which is the Student Outreach Resource Center, and it's our school's community service and service learning center for not only the Bloomberg School, but also the School of Medicine and Nursing at the Johns Hopkins University. So for their day of service, which is on Saturday, April 18th, I'm going to be a faculty lead, and I invite you to come join me and join other alumni to volunteer and give back to the East Baltimore community. Go to the source website for more information about how to sign up. A second upcoming event is the 100 dinners that the alumni office is pushing forward during the centennial. Our chapter is going to host one of these dinners, so stay tuned for an email from me with more information about how to connect with us. Same thing regarding Alumni Day. Alumni Day is an annual event, and we are hoping to have a strong presence at this year's Alumni Day. So we look forward to seeing you, and we hope that you're able to come out and support the school's alumni. And finally, we'll be having elections for our board next year. Again, look out for an email from me about how to get involved. I hope that you enjoyed hearing a little bit about what the chapter is doing and my vision as president of the Alpha Chapter in ways that you can get involved using your time, talent, and treasures. I also hope that you have some questions or comments, so hold on to them for just a few more minutes. We'll have time to, for questions after we hear from our featured speaker for today. So let's go ahead and welcome our featured speaker, Dean Michael Clagg.
Thank and you. Dean Plank, thanks, yeah. thanks yeah. for coming today. It's my pleasure. It was a long walk. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. So everybody knows Dean Clagg. He received his medical degree from the University of Pennsylvania and his MPH from Johns Hopkins School of Public Health and Hygiene. Dean Clagg is an internationally known expert on the epidemiology and prevention of cardiovascular and kidney disease and also a fellow member of Delta Omega. We are proud that you are part of this chapter. I am too. He's been on faculty here since um, in 1987 and assumed his position as Dean of the school in 2005. So thank you again, Dean Clagg, for being here today. We look forward to hearing from you. Thanks, Keisha. Well, I have to say, it's really exciting to do this. And uh, you know, uh, Delta Omega has been part of the school for a long time, and uh, it, it's a wonderful part. But to take advantage of modern technology, one, one of the issues we've always had is how do you reach alumni who aren't in Baltimore or aren't here at the school. And so seeing that this webcast and the other things that you have planned for outreach, it's really a wonderful thing. So thank Great. you. Great, thank yeah. you. Yeah, so it's an exciting time at the school. I, uh, this morning I, I um, started my day with welcoming a group of students who have been accepted into PhD programs mm -hmm. at the school. And it's like every interaction you have with our students or prospective students. They just make you feel good mm -hmm. about the future of the human race. They're, they, they're you know, energetic and excited and they want to change the world. And we know that, that our students do that. They leave us, become alumni, and they go out and change the world. So, so it's exciting. But I just wanted to tell folks a little bit about what's been going on. As I look at the themes in the school for the last year or so, one of the things I think we've done is and it was, it was really the gun symposium that we had uh, after the tragedy in Connecticut with the, uh, in, in Newtown. And where we, we recognize that we have a responsibility as the leading school of public health to educate the public and inform the public about public health problems and, and bringing our perspective and, and bringing the evidence together and hopefully creating solutions. So we did that with the gun symposium where, where we brought together policymakers from around the world who had successfully crafted policies that, to, to address the issue of violence uh, with firearms. And, and then uh, sort of modeling on that, we had a symposium last May uh, on, on prescription drug abuse where once we recognize that it's an epidemic and that uh, and that for every person who dies there's 32 people who are addicted to prescription drugs and that now more people die from prescription drugs than, than die from uh, motor vehicle injuries we had to do something so we, we formed a, a group of faculty who came together uh, Caleb Alexander, Jody Siegel, Andrea Gielen and others and uh, had a symposium and President Clinton who feels very strong about this issue came to our school and, uh, and, and talked uh, about the issue and his personal experience with friend, a young man who had died uh, from prescription drug abuse. And the team brought together uh, policymakers from a variety of fields, from enforcement, law enforcement, from, uh, from uh, clinical medicine, from uh, manufacturing, from a whole variety, and came up with a white paper, a policy statement on how to do that. And we're hoping to release that soon in May, where we'll have another one. Um, more recently, we had um, we had one on some uh, on Ebola, and it was it was really the right symposium at the right time. So, in in the midst of the Ebola epidemic, we in a matter of a week uh, came together with experts again from from our school and from other other institutions to talk about what we knew about Ebola, uh, what we knew about treatment, what we knew about the epidemiology of it, what was going on in West Africa, and and what needed to be done. And uh, it had a huge impact. We had over 6,000 people view it live on the web while it was happening. Mm -hmm. And then we had uh, 4,000 downloads the next day of the podcast. And within a week, it had reached over a million people through, uh, through social media. So again, I'm really proud of mm -hmm. what our faculty have done, sort of using, as you're doing now, technology, how we have the most impact mm -hmm. in improving the health of populations. And then uh, this coming Monday, we have uh, we have one scheduled on measles, which again we recognize this week that this there, there's so much in the media about it. Uh, there there's so much that is misinformation. How do we bring together experts? And we're very fortunate. Rich Besser, who is uh, an alumni of the School of Medicine, who was the acting director of the CDC, and who's now the uh, medical correspondent for ABC News, he will moderate it. Uh, we have. Um, 
Uh, we have a number of other people uh, from our own faculty, uh, Diane Griffin, who is a, a, a world expert on measles and past chair of the Department of uh, Molecular Microbiology and Immunology, Neil Halsey, a world expert on vaccines who heads our Vaccine Safety Institute, uh, he, he will be there speaking. Deborah Roeder, expert on communication, uh, so they'll be there. And then we have from the CDC, Jane Seward, uh, who, who's uh, presenting. And then uh, we're very happy to have Representative Henry Waxman, a former member of Congress, who really led the way in terms of uh, creating legislation to make vaccines available. Uh, so it's changing by the minute, as mm -hmm. you can imagine, but it'll be, it'll be uh, again, live cast. People can go to our our uh, website, the, the, the school's website, www.jhsph.edu, and search on measles and you'll see the web page. Um, if you like to use Facebook, there's also information on Facebook. So just tremendous energy uh, at the school, uh, especially with, with outreach. In terms of our students, I think uh, Marie Diener West, who's here in the studio, can correct me if I'm wrong, but this is probably the largest uh, uh, full-time MPH class that we've ever had. Um, we get more applications uh, to our school, uh, if you look at our degree programs than any other school of public health. So, so I think people recognize the quality of the faculty that we have and the quality of the students. And we all know that we learn a lot from faculty and teachers, but, but we learn a lot from our fellow students. And given that we have students from somewhere over 70 countries every year, you, you get an incredible experience and broadening experience in public health at, at our school. So there's lots of other things I could talk about. I'm not sure how much time I probably that was. I probably used up all my time. Just let me end with the centennial. Okay, the centennial, and that is um, that uh, we're July one is when we're going to start celebrating our centennial year, and. We have a series of events planned throughout the year. It's going to be incredibly exciting. Each department's going to celebrate uh, 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 the centennial in their own way. We'll have school-wide things. But it's really about 25% uh, sort of celebrating what we did and 75% looking forward. Mm -hmm. uh, we have commissioned the history of the school. Karen Thomas has been working on it for a number of years. It's going to uh, pick up where Elizabeth Fee's history ended in 1939 and bring us closer to the present. Uh, so that'll be released next year. We have a number of endowed professorships that are going to be awarded next year. And we're going to have a, uh, a festival in September to celebrate people here uh, in the school and Baltimore community and our contributions. And then we'll end at the end of the year with uh, still being worked out, but probably a symposium and some concluding events. Uh, we're in negotiations with a Hollywood producer about a movie <clears throat> about public health that will feature the school. So lots of exciting things. That's great. Yeah. Really so exciting. I'll, I'll stop. Yeah. Oh, really exciting yeah, yeah. things going at the school. I'm, yeah. I'm thrilled. And um, for those of you who are interested, the measles symposium on Monday is going to be really terrific. So. Yeah. So it'll you know it'll start um, uh, registration starts at 8:30 and then 9 o'clock and it will be approximately half a day. Okay. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Thank you very so, much, Dean Clagg. So I want to transition now and introduce uh, Dr. Marie Diener West, who is over here on the studio with us on the stage, and she'll be taking moderating our, our question and answer period. So if you have questions for either of us, please email the address up on the screen, and we want to hear from you. So we we hope that you're sending questions in, and we look forward to um, to hearing some of your thoughts and ideas. And please also let us know if you enjoyed this format. This is the first time we we ever did something like this for our chapter, and we're looking to see if we should continue to do this. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Marie. Well, thank you, Keisha. It's a delight to be here. And we actually have a few questions that oh, have come in. Wonderful. So, um, so the first one is from Diane, who's an MPH alumnus, who says, how do you recommend um, a Delta Omega member who's off-site, who's mm -hmm. away from Baltimore? What are the best ways for them to get involved? Yeah, thanks for your question, Diane. And, and I'll answer um, De Delta Omega, and perhaps uh, Dean Klein might have some other comments as well. One of the things that we're really trying to do as a chapter is take advantage of technology. So events like this, connecting with people over webcast, um, is one way that we want to continue to engage individuals. Earlier I mentioned that you can be involved on our committees, and our committee meetings don't just occur here in Baltimore. We have a, a great, um, we have great technology, so you can call in for meetings. And so we want to continue to really engage alumni around the world. We, we don't want you only if you're here in Baltimore. We want people from around the world to really connect with us and help to advance this organization. 
So people should reach out to you if they're interested. In Absolutely. Yep. Please, con uh, our email address is up on the screen. So mm -hmm. feel free to email us and let us know that you want to be involved. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks. So, so a second one is um, actually specifically for Dean Clagg, uh -oh. and um, it is from uh, Jerry, who's a PhD alumnus, who asks, um, "What do you perceive as being the best, you know, the biggest strengths of Delta Omega Alpha Chapter to our school?" Well, um, so Delta Omega is uh, is a jewel, and it's always been made up of people who are incredibly committed to to the mission of the school, and it's been supportive and have been incredibly generous in terms of the board alone raised a, a scholarship for us. So, so in that sense, uh, you know, providing support for our students, but also in terms of being ambassadors uh, to, to the outside world and uh, letting people know the strengths of our school, what we do here, and why students should consider our school. I think that's, that's been an advantage. But if you look at our, our alumni in general, but Delta Omega specifically, People go out and achieve great things. That's what the reputation of our school is, is based on, uh, the, uh, the accomplishments of our alumni. And, and uh, Delta Omega, uh, they've led the way in that regard in terms of accomplishments. Mm -hmm. Super. Okay, so, um, so we, we actually have um, a question here that um, has come in from, um, from Priya, who is also an alumnus, obviously, but asked, what is the way in which she could nominate um, a fellow colleague who really has made great contributions to public health since graduation? Mm -hmm. Great, thanks for your question, Priya. We accept alumni nominations, and I will summarize that process and also direct you to our, uh, our website, but I'll also you'll look out for an email with additional information. So alumni can be nominated for induction to the chapter if you're out at least five years after receiving your degree. And there's a form that someone can submit where they have to talk about your accomplishments in public health, your, your, your achievement, what other activities you're involved in. And this person is a current Delta Omega member and they'll submit um, a letter on your behalf and they'll fill out a form and also submit your CV. Again, if you're interested in learning more about how to do this, we are actively seeking nominations. If you're interested in being inducted this year or inducting someone this year, send that to us by April 1 and be on the lookout for an email from me with further instructions. Great, thanks. So we have a, another question from Paul, who is an MPH and a PhD alumnus, who asks, given the talent pool of the Delta Omega Alpha chapter, might a directory and or opt-in listing of those who would be available for consultation in different ways um, actually be something that could be created as a useful resource, not just for Delta Omega Alpha mm -hmm. chapter, but possibly expanded? Yeah, great question, Paul. One of the things I'll, I haven't mentioned it yet, but we also have a LinkedIn site for our chapter. And on LinkedIn, individuals are highlighting their skills and their, and their expertise. And I think that's one way that people can take more advantage of learning to know, you know what our membership is, 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 what our capabilities are of our membership. I'll also say that's something that we can take under consideration under our membership engagement committee. And if it seems that we have the resources to be able to do that, that's something that we can look at. But any way to connect individuals, to help people realize opportunities to use their time, talent, and treasures, that would be a, a great way. And also you can uh, be like Dean Clagg and tweet about what yeah. we're doing, and so that's another great way to connect with individuals too. Exactly. Great, so we have another um, question from Megan that came in regarding you know, the involvement, and you've mentioned you know, so several sources, but how could somebody get involved in, say, the poster competition subcommittee and the scholarship mm -hmm. subcommittee? Mm -hmm. Great question, and those are those are two committees that we would love to have more people get involved in. Again, as I said, this year we had over 80 abstracts submitted for the poster competition. You can imagine we needed a number of judges to help with judging those posters. Again, here's the email address up on the screen. That's a great way to, to express your interest, and we will connect you with the chairs of those committees to tell you exactly how you can get involved. And if you're, you're here um, uh, uh, or if you're not here, again, we want to continue to connect with people around the world and we really want to strengthen our engagement and help you to connect with this chapter. Great. So I'm just waiting to see if a few more yeah. questions might come in. Yeah. Um, so could I just comment about yeah, a couple please, things? Please so, do. so I was trying to be quiet, but no, uh, no. I, I am <laughs> tweeting. I'm not being rude. I'm, I'm tweeting. I'm tweeting about Marie feeding questions to Keisha. Uh, but the um, so in terms of uh, the website, you know, one of the things as a school that we have uh, been doing is updating our web presence. And so if if you 
uh, have visited our website in the last six or eight months, you've noticed that it's been completely redone, and that includes Delta Omega. And, uh, and we're very fortunate in having some, uh, because the issue about alumni and, and how, do we, how do we reach out to alumni, that's not an issue just for Delta Omega, right? It's an issue for the entire school. And it's something I think that we, uh, we think is very important. And, and in these very tight financial times, we've been able to put uh, some resources and investment in, in that. So, so you, you, you probably know that we've had meetings around the U.S. and, and some abroad but when I travel with alumni groups that, that vary in size but some up to several hundred and and that's really uh, do the work of, of uh, three people but uh, uh, Jimmy uh, Lou DeBakey who you may have met is new to the school she heads constituent relations Allison Hardy is a, is a young woman who's also joined the school who has been in charge of reaching out to alumni and Morgan Morton is also in that group so so we have so I think I have one coming up in March in uh, in Boston for anybody who's in the Boston area for alumni where we get to meet one-on-one -on -one and talk to people and for me you know uh, alumni challenged me from day one is you with how do you how does the school intend to take advantage of the strength of our alumni? And, and it goes even more for Delta Omega. So we're working through strategies for that. Uh, but, but clearly we, we've seen with the MPH mentorship program uh, that that's one way that we do that. But the, the uh, Delta Omega members really are those who have accomplished a great deal. And we especially want to include them in things like the mentorship program. And as we think about educational initiatives in the future, we're in which we can take, uh, take advantage of alumni's expertise, we're going to be calling on you. Great. Well, I feel great. like I should really talk about the MPH mentorship program <laughs> yeah, okay. since the great. dean brought this up. And so the mentorship program allows alumni to volunteer to be matched with a current student, either um, at this point um, full-time, but also could be part-time. And so based on the interests of both the student and the alumnus, there's a match made. And this, these people do not need to meet um, physically. It can um, happen by Skype or email or telephone, but it's really been um, a great uh, both career development and, and source of advice for current MPH students. So we'd welcome involvement That's in great. that as well. And if you're oh, interested in connecting, yeah, can they they'll email email the our our email address for Delta Omega and express your interest in being connected with the mentorship program. Thank you. Great. Okay, so let's see. Um, I'm seeing one question that really could be a final one. Okay. Okay. Gonna... Bad, that bad, huh? Well, no, I think that Final uh, question. they need to, should we re recommend that they contact that email address, Delta Omega Alpha? Um, because this question was, you know, now that you've gone through this session, how did you enjoy using this form of, you know, communication and technology? I had a great time. I think this was a lot of fun. I, I really um, enjoyed thinking about what messages we wanted to get out today. Um, uh, it was, uh, I don't use the teleprompter often, so it was, my, it was fun to use that again today. <laughs> um, this, I really, really am excited about this opportunity. Again, this is the first time we've ever done something like this. We will consider if we'll do it again. We, we hope to hear from you. If you want us to do something like this again, where we're able to provide updates, where you can ask us questions, let us know. Because if, if that's what the membership wants, we will make it happen. Um, but I really enjoyed this opportunity. I really enjoyed also getting some time with Dean Clagg yeah, to help. Uh, picture, yeah. And we'll have to take a yeah. selfie before we yeah, finish. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, really enjoyed talking to Dean Clagg yeah. and hearing from him. And mm -hmm. I think just, again, another opportunity for alumni to hear what's going on at the school and mm -hmm. all the sure. great things. It, it is an exciting time. Mm -hmm. it, it's a great time to be at the school. Terrific. Mm -hmm. It is. Well, we had one last question, but I think, um, th and this is from um, from Megan, who asks, what are on-campus opportunities for Delta Omega um, uh, members, and I think you do, did allude, um, Keisha, to source, since mm -hmm. you know the mm -hmm. source day, et cetera. We've just had one that's also come in from Aaron, who's mm -hmm. um, who is an M MPH, a PhD graduate, and she asks, does Delta, Delta Omega Alpha have meetings at receptions or any other conferences similar to how mm -hmm. APHA incorporates alumni mm -hmm. and Delta Omega? Yeah. So, um, so we do know that the overall Delta mm -hmm. Omega has a reception mm -hmm. at the APHA, but I'm not aware of others. Um, are you? No. I, I, in the past, I think they used to have a meeting at the Association for Schools and Programs of Public Health at that meeting, but at our annual 
Delta Omega meeting, which just happened in New Orleans around APHA, we decided that that would be a good time for all the Delta Omega chapters to get together. Mm -hmm. So as, as far as I know, thus far, APHA is that time. But if there are alumni who are around um, other large public health meetings, that might be a time for us to get together socially. So I think it's something for us to think about. Um, and we'll, we'll look and see what meetings people are attending. Mm -hmm. So I didn't mention the International Conference on Family Planning. I'm very mm -hmm. proud that the Gates Institute at our school has started that. At the last one in Ethiopia, I think we had over 100 alumni mm -hmm. there. And, and so there's another one coming up in Indonesia next year. We should look at that as to see how many alumni might be there and how many Delta Omegas and mm -hmm. whether we could do something. Terrific. Mm -hmm. Great idea. Thank Great. you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wonderful. Well, and if there are other questions, again, please email us. And although our time will, will soon be up, we'll be sure to get back to you. Mm -hmm. So we are, I think, nearly out of time. Or is there, are there some other questions? There are no other questions. Okay. okay. okay so we'll, we'll wrap up. And I want to just thank everyone again for participating in our first annual webinar meeting. And if you have feedback, again, on the meeting, please send it to the Delta Omega email address here on the screen. Also, we want to encourage you to connect with us via Facebook or LinkedIn. And again, please consider joining one of our committees. Finally, let me draw your attention to the left side of the screen. And this is an image of our new Delta Omega banner. Mm -hmm. Some of you may have seen it outside the school's reception at APHA in New Orleans this past fall. The words on this banner are inspire, research, innovate and discover and when we created the banner we selected these words because we felt that they described who we are and what we do i am proud to be a member of this prestigious honor society and i hope that you are too i invite all of you to join us and to continue to find ways to use your time talent and treasures to advance the mission of this chapter which is connecting johns hopkins public health students alumni and faculty to recognize and develop leadership that advances and sustains the public's health. Thanks again for tuning in. Take care and have a great weekend. Ditto.